Cheers guys, welcome back to another video. And I wanna preface this video. We've got a success story about a dream job using robotic affirming, but I wanna just, like I said, preface this. I've got a lot of feedback on what you guys are interested in for as far as the robotic affirming ebook, and I'm working on it right now. And a lot of you guys are interested in the neuroscience aspect of it. You know, why does this actually work? And so as I'm writing this right now and doing, going into the, you know, I, I, I already know this stuff, but I'm just going back through for my own research just to make sure I have the exact, you know, data to present to you guys. Because I know that, that the logical mind wants that proof. It wants that knowing to know that this isn't just woo woo, mumbo jumbo. And I get that completely. It's important for us to realize that robotic affirmations are really what they are is just thoughts. And really what it is, is just, it is the story that we're telling ourselves. And so this is the greatest tool that we have at our disposal. We have all these philosophers throughout time, you know, James Allen, as a man thinketh, uh, the Buddha, and, you know, even, even Jesus and things in scripture talking about how, you know, ask and you will receive and, and, and it, not to say that people always have success by just simply asking for something, but the, the, the awareness, the awareness that you have, there's something called your reticular activate activating system. And it's, it's a bu bunch of neurons in the brain, but essentially what it does, it is responsible for what you are paying attention to as well as different parts of um, different states of awareness. That's why we talk about, you know, getting into that hypnotic trance like state the alpha level of mind, the state akin to sleep, that is allowing your, your yourself to be more suggestible. But your brain tunes in based on what it, what it deems relevant to you. So if you are coming from the mindset that, oh, I'm never gonna have this SP or I'm never gonna have this, this job or, or I'm unlucky or whatever, you're not even gonna be tuning into those potentials. And those, those things will either not present themselves in your reality or they'll be there, but you won't notice them. And so it's very, very, at the, it, it's such a foundational thing. And that's why, you know, this channel, um, a, a lot of this, the videos that we've been talking about is this, because essentially it's just about your thoughts. It's about what thoughts are you allowing yourself to entertain on a moment to moment basis? Because when you begin to affirm, now you're beginning to insert the thoughts that you're choosing instead of just reacting continually to the external environment, because that is what takes away your power. What gives you your power is your ability to declare, to assert, to affirm. That is what affirming means, to assert that something is true for you or for the world around you. And the more that you do this, you know, you, it's, it's, it's inarguable that anybody that's achieving anything that is, I mean, just, I, I always think about Elon Musk, for example, right? The guy is sending rockets off into space, right? If he was entertaining thoughts that he is incapable of doing that, it wouldn't be happening, right? And that goes for anything at any level, at any scale. But if he's able to do this, if he's able to achieve, and obviously he was, he's been blessed and gifted and he's extremely intelligent, as are many people that we see and we, we look up to and we think, wow, you know, how have they been able to achieve this? But a lot of it goes back into what they allow themselves to believe. What, it, what is the story that they're telling themselves? Because you know, if you if you go in and really analyze um, somebody's somebody's innate talents, innate capabilities, a lot of us have them. We're just not t allowing ourselves to tap into them because we have we're harboring these beliefs, these old stories that are not serving us. Anyways, guys, I don't want to go on too much of a tangent there. I'm just inspired to talk about, I suppose, you know, the, the loops of how the thoughts affect your emotional state, affect your feeling state, and then we get caught up in this cycle because now our feelings are affecting our emotional emotional state. The body and mind are inextricably linked, right? And that's why I like to take this holistic approach. I'm big on, you know, health, fitness is a lot. A lot of you, you guys, if you probably notice, a lot of people that are into some of this stuff, like manifesting or self-development, they also are into fitness. You know, if you watch like Dylan James or even um, there's another uh, a, a girl's channel who I've been watching lately, uh, the Soul, Soul's Playground. Well, they're, they were big into fitness, right? And one reason and health and, you know, eating and making healthy recipes because the body and the mind are, are interconnected. And if you are consuming and doing things in the physical world that are contributing to a negative emotional states, such as eating just trashy fast food all the time, it's going to affect your thinking. It's a cyclical cycle. And so anyways, 
just as a, as a tangent, just to be aware of that thoughts feed into our emotional states and then that feeds back into our thoughts, right? And so the power of affirming is to kind of stop that in its tracks and reclaim the, the narrative, which is then going to affect our emotions and that's how thoughts become matter. Thoughts become our different emotional states. And Joe Dispenza talks about how it then affects our gene expression. The cells in our body are being affected by our thoughts. I could go on and on about this, but anyways, getting into the post here. So, hi all. I hope this post finds you in a place of ease and trust that things are working out for you. Yeah, and if not, I hope that it will motivate you to use affirmations or whatever tools work best for you to find yourself there again. I wanna share a little success story that I manifested recently that I hope can motivate anyone who's struggling in their 3D and are having doubts in the law of assumption and the power of our minds. I know success stories have been very helpful to me and I'm happy to share a victory for anyone I can inspire. Little backstory. I've been attempting to manifest my SP back for a while now, but there's been a ton of internal resistance because our circumstances appear so bad and there's so much pain in the old story. A couple months ago, I decided to focus more of my attention onto manifesting money instead. This is because I was feeling quite frustrated in my SP manifesting abilities and money's always been fairly easy for me to attract because I, was, I have way less attachment and resistance to it. This is a great point that they're bringing up. If you guys are struggling with one particular area, and a lot of the times, you know, this, this can be a, a huge hurdle, especially when there's like, yeah, all this, um, as they mentioned here, there's this backlog, this history there. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's stuff there, right? It's really good sometimes to put your attention on something where you can get a win, right? And there's this, this whole phenomenon that exists. It's like the winner effect. The more that you can begin to stack wins in your favor, the more that internal knowing, that internal confidence, that internal belief in yourself is going to come to the forefront and you're going to be able to allow yourself to feel that ability for other things that may be bigger or maybe harder to manifest or harder for you to kind of get into that believing state or, or harder to achieve. And so it's very important sometimes when we're in that place where we're not seeing where we feel like we're struggling, to be honest. It, it feels like things aren't working in our favor to really start to get these small wins and really stack these small wins because then that's gonna begin to move the, the momentum, our general momentum, our energy into the right vibratory state and put us on the right frequency. So um, one of my first powerful experiences with the law and money was a couple years ago when I decided I wanted to manifest 7K. I had recently read you were a badass at making money and wanted to test out my ability to attract a certain number. I felt believable and seven is my lucky number. Only a couple weeks later, I decided I made up this amount of money. I made this amount of money, affirmed it for some time, and I imagined I saw it in my bank account. My car blew up, literally. literally. I was babysitting and we walked outside and I saw that the entire car was in flames. Apparently it was due to an engine design flaw. Beware of the Hyundai and Kia models 2011 to 2013. Long story short, my insurance ended up giving me a check of exactly $7,700 for the car. I was able to make a big move across the country and the family member I was going to live with had an extra hybrid car I could use. So I didn't even need to use the money for a new car. I love this story because it's such an example uh, to me that the universe is giving you everything you want and even when the circumstances seem terrible, I was devastated at first. Things are always working out in your favor. Now, a couple months ago, I started to affirm that I make 5K a month. That may not sound like a lot, but it was a solid start as an improvement from the 3.5K I was making. Jerry Hicks has said to put your basket far enough that you are excited if you make the shot, but not too far that you don't believe you will make it, which I really resonate with. Again, that's, like, that's stacking the small wins in your favor. My only tool was robotic affirming. I make 5K a month consistently throughout the day and imagining myself making the, the amount of money. I kid you not, the next week my manager approached me and said I don't make as much as I should be. She said she would try and advocate to our boss that I get a raise to $4,500 a month. With the part-time job I work, which is another passion job I manifested, that would put me at exactly $5,000 a month. I was like, wow, this works really fast. Well, my boss declined and said I only deserve an additional $500 a month, I was super disappointed and doubtful um, if this truly worked after all. 
Well, fast forward a couple months and I realized after my manager quits that I absolutely need to leave this job because of how toxic the boss is. I write out my list of everything I'm looking for in a job, an environmental and inspiring cause, preferably nonprofit, hardworking and kind team, remote, paid travel, and at least 5K a month. A week after I made the decision that I need to leave my current job, my sister sends me a posting about a job with all of these qualities on the list plus more. I'm recently out of college and don't have extensive professional experience, but they were looking for the exact qualifications I had. It all came to me. I'd even made a trust fall into the universe and quit my current job without a backup plan because I knew no matter what I had to get out of this toxic job. That's commendable. You know, when things are really, you can sense it's not, it's, it's, you gotta, you gotta get out sometimes from certain situations. But honestly, as soon as I saw that the pay was exactly 5k, I knew I had it in the bag. If I felt like a secret little joke that the universe and I were exchanging, which is how I believe manifesting should feel. Despite the fact that I was concerned, I was underqualified since it is such a great position. I passed through the round of three interviews uh, and they all went incredibly well. I just signed my contract today. Fun aside, a cherry on top of it all happened this afternoon, which felt like the ultimate wink from the higher self and what has compelled me to share this with you. Since I've manifested the offer for this job, I've been so impressed by my own power that I've been keeping my mental diet clean, clean as possible. We aren't perfect and it takes repetition to change old neural pathways. Exactly, this is exactly what's going on. You're like pruning away those old pathways and by like affirming and thinking of the new thoughts, which again is, is getting your focus. Your RAS is now focusing on what you want it to. It's beginning to shift that story and your personality, you know, as Joe Dispenza would say, because your personality is creating your personal reality. So, um, one of my favorite affirmations has been, I'm living in my dream reality, or I'm living my dream life. And then I go about my day repeating this to myself when I need to redirect my focus, but most importantly, gently allowing the feeling I would have if I was doing this action and I felt like my whole life was whole. I'm thankful, lucky, or whatever feeling I would embody in that moment in my ideal reality. As I'm doing this in a cafe last week, I see a raffle to win a free spa and skincare treatment day. I'm already feeling so lucky and thankful, I decide to sign up and lo and behold, I win. After the amazing and fun skincare treatment this afternoon, the woman pa passes out to each of us cards of affirmation. She says, now we have just pampered you physically, but I know the importance of taking care of your mind and the power of thoughts in changing our lives. If you, each of you will pick a card and I truly believe that this message, that is the message you are meant to hear today, wow. The affirmation card I picked says, I am courageous and I stand up for myself. With the back stating, know your worth and don't allow others to make you feel any less. Their opinions are just that, opinions. This was exactly what I needed to hear as I have recently been horribly treated, been horribly treated by three of my closest friends and blocked by all of them without being given a reason. I've been very hurt by this, knowing that I manifested it, but not understanding how or why but I can now see that this is the, just the bridge of incidents to something greater, probably. Not defining myself through the opinions of others and finding better friends. This has been one of the hardest and darkest years of my life for a multitude of reasons, and I know it was because of a deeply negative spiral I had in my own thinking. I also now know that this darkness will soon heal, all feel worth it, as it has forced me to find the light of my own consciousness through the power of pure awareness paired with my imagination and positive thinking. I love that. You know, this is such a great reframe. Um, <clears throat> and I can, I can relate to that as well, because, you know, when we're going through these dark times, it really begins, we, it really can weigh down on us sometimes. And knowing and seeing that end, that light at the end of the tunnel, as cliche as it may sound, that it all is redirecting you, especially when you have friends or people in your life that just kind of like flip on you and almost this way where it's just so confusing. You're like, what did it, what did I do to deserve this? And especially if you are a good person and if, especially when all you've ever done is do things for these people, be a, a positive influence in their life it can be very, very hurtful. And so I love that reframe of just, it's forcing her to find the light of her own consciousness through the power of awareness. 
and that she's going, it's redirecting her to better friends because yeah, those friends were probably just weirdos. You know, I can even just sense through the energy of the, the way this is written that this person isn't the type of person that's going to be like, at least, you know, I would be very shocked if, if it, it, there doesn't seem to be any weird type of energy coming through here. She just seems like a positive person that's just trying to do her best. And for people to do that and betray you like that, um, this is what you got to do is you got to really look at it through and get, get rid of all this. Oh, you know, I manifested all this and then blaming yourself. That's a, I think that people get too caught up in that whole thing in this community. And really you got to just be like, okay, well, you know, this is redirecting me for something better. Okay. Even if you believe that you manifested it, well, maybe you manifested it to bring you to your highest good. Maybe it's not a sign that you are, you know, uh, thinking bad thoughts or that you are this, you know, putting out this negative energy. I think, I feel like that's where the brain goes by hearing this stuff of everyone's you pushed out. Somebody treats you badly. We need to really cohesively as a a group as a community that, that talks about this, get rid of that thinking because all that's doing is compiling more guilt, more kind of like shame and really just getting us even further away from what it is that we're wanting to get to. So, um, like I said, I really, really like the way that she stated this. And so here, here's the, the rest of the post. So if you've been going through a dark time, I hope this post inspires you to know your own power and watch your thoughts. Make it fun. It feels good to think nice things, but also be gentle with yourself in the process. Exactly. My biggest challenge has been forgiving myself for all the seemingly horrible and unfortunate circumstances I've manifested in my life the last year. But as Bashar says, everything is inherently neutral. If you give it a positive meaning, you can only receive a positive result. And that is just, yes, absolutely. Next step, using this newfound wisdom to manifest my SP and creating music. As a kid, I remember telling my dad, I know the universe is speaking to me because it was so easy and fun for me to read the signs it was using to communicate to me about my questions and desires. I know now that it was and is me speaking to me. As Neville says, there's only I am and your infinite self is that I am. Okay, so from you to you, from me to me, and me to me, you got this and you will receive your desires. Yeah, um, I just want to point out that while that's all well and good, and you can you can have this perspective if that if that helps you, um, I think this non dualism and all this stuff that can be great if you're looking for some sort of spiritual enlightenment or something. But I really don't I really don't personally resonate with that. I think that we are co creating our reality, and I think that yeah, while God source energy is permeating throughout everything, and so on one hand you can look at it like that. I don't think that that's really helpful for uh, achieving your desires, for manifesting your goals, because it, it just doesn't resonate with me personally. So feel free to either take or leave what resonates with you. And that's what I would suggest all of you do, because certain things that I read that I come across doesn't resonate with me. And I, I leave it at that. I'm, I, I, I've become more and more like this, where I'm just like, okay, I like all the rest of this post. Don't really feel with like vibe with that right now and at this point and so that's all well and good but the last sentence life is meant to be fun i hope you can have fun with it all too and i'll just add on that the reason that this doesn't like i don't think this is helpful is because as soon as you start believing oh yeah everything is me and everything is like you know that's again getting yourself into this place where for me personally what what my mind tends to do is as soon as bad things are happening i'm like blaming myself or i'm like uh oh yeah like how did i cause like you know this negative thing that's happening in my circumstances or even negative things happening around the world it's like if you really take this to its logical conclusion all these terrible things it's like i'm the cause of this it makes you feel like crap so why do that why not just adopt the idea and I really think this is more close to the truth anyways, that we're all co-creating our reality here. I'm having an impact and, and quantum physics really is proving this as well, that look, we're all walking around. We're like these black holes and these white holes. Nassim Haramein talks about this. He's a quantum physicist, talks about the toroidal fields and my energy, I'm picking up on other people's energies and I'm also putting out my energy into the universe. So if you're in a negative environment, Let's say that you're in a like in a house with everybody that's doing like meth or something. 
well, you're going to be picked, picking up on those vibrations. It's not like you created all that, all those people doing that. Or if you go into a homeless shelter, or if you go down Skid Row in LA, it's not like you are the cause of these people's situations. Like that is just insane, in my opinion, to, to be thinking like that and completely delusional. What is helpful is to know that you, by going and entering into any area, you can emit positive energy. You can go and have a positive impact. If you choose, you can go and pass out you know, food for the homeless, or you can do something that will positively impact, impact these people's lives if you choose to. But you can also just choose to get into a better environment, an environment where you are actually going to be receiving um, positivity as well, because that's going to help you. The better, the better that you can get in an alignment with other people that are on a positive frequency, and the more that you can surround yourself with good energies, it's going to be way, way easier for you to maintain this positive energetic state. It's really not helpful for us to be looking at things like, oh yeah, you know, everything all the time is me pushed out because you're just, you're just caught, caught up in this mental loop of like, oh, what am I doing to cause this? It's like, it's completely not helpful. And I like completely just understand how, how little that serves you for accomplishing your goals. When you are focused on what you want to affirm, the energy that you're putting out, you see something negative happen, you're like, okay, well, maybe it's redirecting me to this. You don't dwell on why these things are happening, how you created them, if you created them in the first place, because a lot of the times, I don't think you did, okay? You can feel free to disagree with me if you want. Um, I, I don't take this dogmatic approach that Neville does. You know, I'm my own person. I don't believe that everything, I, don't, I disagree with Neville on certain things for sure. I don't believe necessarily in the law. I don't think it's a fucking law. It's like, again, we are co-creating here. We're emitting and we're receiving. So the more that we can balance ourselves, the more we can get in that inner equilibrium, the better that we're gonna be able to govern the energy that we're projecting. Otherwise, we're gonna be at the mercy of receiving these neg oftentimes negative energies that we're surrounded by, right? That's what makes sense to me. That's how I operate. And that has served me much more than continually looking at how and why I created some sort of negative event. It's completely useless to think like that. In fact, it's counterproductive to achieving what it is that you want. Anyways, um, I know a bit of a tangent here, but let's just read this a couple, uh, a couple uh, comments here. When you robotically affirm, were you focused on thinking your affirmations or was it mindless and could you be thinking about something else? And then they also asked about why not robotically affirm the SP. So the OP says, I've done both. When I was in a pretty dark place earlier this year, I bought a self-concept course so that I could have a reboot on how I see myself. Perhaps it isn't necessary to manifest your desires, but see our ultimate manifestation as who we create ourselves to be and perceive ourselves in the world. And I wanted that as a foundation. I would repeat affirmations each morning and night with state statements such as, I deeply trust myself no matter what. I claim myself over any 3D circumstances. I would repeat these and then gently allow the feeling of what it would feel like if I truly believed these to be true without forcing anything. Throughout the day, I'd also robotically repeat specifically specific affirmations to myself of what I want to create or manifest. Honestly, I truly believe that feeling is the secret, but robotically affirming is fun to me and allows the feeling to naturally come over time. We're thinking millions, billions of thoughts a day, so why not think in terms of what we want to create? I repeat them to myself, acting as if I already have the desire with a confident and lighthearted tone in my head. I sometimes find I can make it feel more in a state of lack if my tone in my head feels desperate. Yeah, I do it whenever I want to, and again, I, I believe strongly that when we're constantly looking at, oh, how did I create this? That's getting us into this. It's taking us off balance. We're losing our inner equilibrium. Um, I do it whenever I want to go to as I go about my day-to-day -day activities. I see continual robotic affirming as a way to prime my subconscious mind. Another way to think about this too is like, what thoughts serve me? We, all have, we always have a po the power to focus on what serves us. Even if something might be true or there might be some truth in it, Really, the, the best way that we benefit is by focusing only on what is empowering us and only what is taking us closer to our goals, right? That's another way of thinking about this. And I think a lot of people that achieve success, they really do do that. They're always thinking and they, all, they entertain a story of like, okay, well, yeah, well, this person's just not ready. This person's just insecure. You know, the SP, they're not thinking, oh, how did I cause this, blah, blah, blah. It's, no, that's completely unhelpful to think like that. What is helpful is to keep emitting this positive energy that you're putting out. 
you know that you're a genuine person, you know that you're authentic, you know that you are worthy of love and appreciation, and you've seen it in other areas of your life, right? You, you, you have good friendships, you've had experiences or histories in your past that you can um, draw from to say, hey, look, I know I'm a good person. If this person doesn't see it, that's their loss. That is a much more empowering frame of reference to come from. Anyways, um, I see continual robotic affirming as a way to prime my subconscious. That's another good term that is, you know, it's a psychology term. We're priming by, by going, there's a book called Persuasion by Robert Cialdini and then there's one called Presuasion. And Presuasion is all about what we're primed for going into any situation. It's that um, we're priming our subconscious by doing these robotic affirmations. Because it is difficult for me to force the feeling when I have a lot of resistance, although I definitely think SATS is the most powerful tool. One of the few times I did SATS with my SP, I imagined both of us sitting in the labyrinth at the center of my hometown because it was easy and less painful to just imagine seeing him somewhere. That was all a very spiritual and peaceful moment. I kid you not, a week later, I forget all about this imaginal act and suddenly feel called to go to my hometown's tab labyrinth to sit and read. There he is, sitting at the opposite side of it, exactly how I imagine. Trust me, I definitely do robotically affirm for my SP. However, if I'm being honest, I know that I still have a lot of negative thoughts throughout the day as well because of all the pain. It's just a gradual practice of flipping them to what I want to create instead. Sweet. Yeah, um, great post. For the most part, I love um, the, the majority of it. It's just that I have that beef with that one kind of idea that I've already kind of beat to death in this video. So we're not going to hash it out again, but um, I'm just looking to see if these comments here. Yeah, a great, great little post. And um, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> that being said, guys, much love as always. Drop this video with a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Hit me with a subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.